The Legal Corner podcast series. Welcome to today's episode of The Legal Corner, a podcast which covers a variety of legal issues to keep you informed. Hosted by attorney at law Colin Dinoon and communication specialist Leonardo Torres. Good to be back with you on the Legal Corner podcast series. Leonardo will join us in a subsequent episode when he's able to do so. Today we have two distinguished guests who are going to be providing us with information on the topic of advocates for making a difference. So for those of us who attended U Willing Law School, you will all be familiar with, with Miss Rosanna Phipps, who was the, the library assistant. And she runs an organization by the name of Advocates for Making a Difference. And she's here with us together with Dr. Reverend Dr. Renal Price. So just to tell you a bit about them. So Mrs. is from the Kurab Tunapuna area. She would have received her education at Fatima Primary School, then secondary school at Kurab Junior Secondary and St. Joseph's College. She attained a bachelor's degree in information and library science from Cassette, and she's a member of the New Testament Church of God. She has attended the Tunapuna branch since 1986, which is now under the leadership of Dr. Bridgelal M. Sinath. There she met her husband, who is deceased, and she was married to him in December 1987. She's the proud mother of three children, Rochelle, Roshana, and Roche, who are her pride and joy. She is presently retired after having worked at the library for 35 years. And she described this as a chapter of her life which was filled with bliss and blisters. In March 2021, Ms. Phipps started the NGO Advocates for Making a Difference. And that is what we are going to be talking about today. We also have Reverend Dr. Price, just to tell, him, tell you a bit about him. Reverend Dr. Renal Price serves in ministry as an ordained minister and youth pastor at the Montrose New Testament Church of God. He is educated in law at the University of the West Indies and the Hugh Wooding Law School. And he was called to the bar of Trinidad and Tobago and Barbados in 2013 and 2014, respectively. Dr. Price is a senior legal officer at the Office of the Attorney General and Ministry of Legal Affairs. Dr. Price is the author of Grounded in the Word Devotional, Your 40 Day Guide to Developing Deeper Intimacy with God, which is on sale in Trinidad and on Amazon. He is presently writing an upcoming book entitled Bearing Fruit for Jesus That Lasts, Rediscovering the Principles of Intentional and Relational Discipleship, a series of books on apologetics for kids and teens. Dr. Price is a director of Advocates for Making a Defense, and he is married and has two wonderful children. So, good day to you, Dr. Price, and Ms. Phipps, and welcome to the Legal Corner podcast series. Thank you very much. I appreciate that um, wonderful Thank introduction. You, Colin. Right. Thank you so much. It's a for pleasure to us. have you all. It's How are you all honor. going today? <laughs> um, pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> I'm doing well, thanks. Great. Dr. Price, I didn't know you were an attorney, so that is really an interesting thing to know. So you are quite a fit in yeah, this I, to be on the legal. I've done quite a few things in my life before. <laughs> right. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, well, we're going to get right in it, into it. Uh, t- I'm going to ask you, uh, Ms. Phipps, you tell us, what is Advocates for Making a Difference all about? Um, it's simply put in the put- Simply put in a nutshell, it is us raising awareness of domestic violence. All right. Um, it, the awareness can come through 
educating the young people, you know, um, having meetings like what we have had before. Um, different um, avenues we would like to explore. So it's basically that to um, raise the awareness in the public about this scourge of violence, that it's unacceptable. You know, even though we would think that it's a private matter, personal matter, it really spills over into society. And so it, it has to be stemmed, it has to be, you know, addressed. There must be something done about it. And I believe that um, making the awareness you know, creating a greater awareness, let me say a greater awareness, it, um, that's what we're about. And the second thing that we would like to do as well is to raise funds for the victims of domestic abuse. And so we try to facilitate um, in this way in helping victims so that we can also, we also looking at um, in, in raising the funds because um, there are other groups out there that are doing similar work, all right? If we can raise funds to assist those groups that are struggling financially, you know, to be some help, to make the difference, you know, because there are a lot of NGOs out there who have, you know, been doing a massive job and have, for some reason, have gone dominant because of funds, all right? Because, you know, it's, it's, it's a big job. It's not just about <clears throat> talk but it's about action, helping. And so we want to help those victims, we want to help those um, institutions, those groups in, or individuals who have similar vision and heart to assist or to make the difference for those individuals who really need the help. Now, Ms. Phipps, how prevalent would you say is domestic violence in Trinidad and Tobago? Well, um, if I can just backtrack a bit as to how I um, started this NGO, Advocates of Making a Difference, it was due to a report that I read um, on women, a survey on women's health done by IDB. And that report was in 2017. And it basically said this, one out of three women suffer from domestic abuse. And with that information, it just stirred me, you know, I, I just couldn't phantom how prevalent it is. I'm like, wow, you know, I mean, from time to time, you pick up a newspaper and you would read, you know, uh, about a woman, a young woman or, you know, a spouse being murdered, right? Men as well. And so I said to myself, I'm about to retire. I should try and do something because let me give back to society in a small measure, you know, that um, I can reach out to someone and make the difference for them. So it's very prevalent. However, um, I was reading up today and I understand that the numbers were pretty high in 2012. Um, sorry, 2020, I believe it was. Um, this is um, an analysis done by the Crime and Problem Analysis Branch of Trinidad Tobago Police Service, where it says that approximately 11,441 reports relating to domestic violence were recorded between 2010 and 2015. Um, it also goes on to say approximately 75% of these reports related to female individuals so that um, it is pretty prevalent, it is pretty high. As a matter of fact, um, after reading this report in about um, from IDB, I started doing a bit of um, uh, funding and I had established that, you know, we'll do some sales and on that T-shirt, you would have seen it on our advertisement, Stop the Epidemic. So it is of epidemic proportions. And Dr. Price, I want to bring you in here now. Uh, what is the role of civil society in addressing this problem? Yeah, uh, Colin, thank you very much for that question. So civil society has a very um, fundamental role to play. When we talk about uh, civil society, we refer to government, let's say, at, at, you know, at a more macro level. Um, so the government is responsible um, in part for creating policies, 
right, around protecting its citizens. Um, those policies would include legislation, uh, will, will, will inform legislation at the parliamentary level. Um, so you would have um, laws, for example, on our law books today against domestic violence, um, sexual abuse, um, and battery, et cetera. And, and so uh, on a governmental level, um, there's a responsibility of our legislators to enact um, um, legislation that addresses these issues. Um, however, I, I think that that is really the last stage of, um, of let's say, um, things that can be done to address the issue of domestic violence. We have to recognize that how we raise our children today um, is really the fundamental um, issue, right? Because if you raise children of integrity, uh, children who know how to value themselves and others, and um, then you will have um, a, a society that respects people and respects their, their privacy um, and, and their, their right not to be abused, you know, not to um, suffer violence. Um, if you raise people who are aware of their emotions and know how to manage themselves effectively, um, then you will have a society where um, domestic violence is significantly reduced. So I, I think that, um, you know, apart from making legislation, um, it is critically important for NGOs like ourselves, like advocates to making a difference, to speak to um, churches and speak to um, family units, because I believe that the family uh, really is the most essential unit in society, and, and advise them, guide them, direct them as to how to um, raise healthy individuals, healthy children, and, um, and with respect to the church, and, and how to teach people how to be healthy individuals um, as, as part of, of their um, activities. So I think that civil society has a great role to play. Um, I mentioned the church. Um, you know, churches, they, their, their role and function is really to teach people how to live. And, and um, you know, it's about righteous living and, and healthy and holistic living. Unfortunately, in the past, um, the church has not been um, has has not been removed from you know these kind of issues, um, and and so the church has a role to play in teaching people how to live and, and and counseling them. You know, many people might not go to see a psychiatrist or a psychologist, you know, because they don't have the fees um, to pay um, one. However, um, several people would go. Um, you know, to a church. And so churches have a responsibility, I think, also to play a greater role in addressing these issues and, and helping to um, to curb it. Um, yeah, but again, would you say that the, the church talk about domestic violence at all? Is it something um, that is preached about? Is it something that is really mentioned? Yeah. Or is it something that is swept under the carpet? Yeah. For, from a societal standpoint, the church, I don't think, speaks a lot about domestic violence. It is normally seen as a social issue um, uh, and not really as a spiritual issue. Of course, we know instinctively that for someone to strike, strike, strike another person or to harm another person in a um, in, in a in a grievous or, or um, in a grievous way um, would be um, a, a, a sinful issue. Let's say from a biblical standpoint, um, but it is not spoken about often because it is more seen as a societal issue and um, it and, and we we tend to gravitate more to the bigger issues right um, that we that we that we see plaguing you know society um, there were, that, that are what, what some persons may consider as bigger because you know just by saying that uh, persons who are experiencing domestic violence would say it's a big issue to me so, correct you know. yeah and, and I agree. And so that is why we, um, the, the church has a responsibility to speak to these issues um, which affect all of our lives. Right? So, you know, you can't have a thriving church, let's say, if you don't have healthy people, right? As if, if you really want people to be healthy, you need to address um, them at the point, you know, of where they're coming from. And so if they're coming from a home, you need to get to know what is going on in their family situation and then that would give you some level of um, 
of clarity as to how you ought to address this person one on one. But then on a on a more on a bigger level, let's say on a Sunday morning service, let's say at a Sunday morning service, um, I think it needs to be mentioned that we have to um, we have a responsibility to raise healthy citizens in our country, and part of you know developing spiritually is also um, the part of developing spiritually spiritually is to um, help people recognize their need to honor and respect your neighbor. The Bible says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. You wouldn't go about beating yourself and hating yourself, right? So then why should you do that to someone else? You know? Great. Now, Dr. Price, I'm going to ask you this question, and I'm going to also bring in Ms. Phipps on this, because I want to know if you believe that enough is being done to protect male victims of domestic violence. Yeah, so so obviously this is a, a very um, uh, personal issue as, as a male, you know, um, not that I am experiencing it, but uh, as a male, you know, I I, um, I always hear that men are not treated with respect when they report um, these kinds of issues. The question always is, why? Why is that? Well, uh, on to some level, on some level, it appears as though the issue is that men are seemed are are are, are supposed to appear as um, strong, macho, and uh, they are supposed to um, you know not show any emotion. Um, the reality is that uh, we live in a society now where um, we are told that men or women are the same, even though biologically um, and psychologically that is that is not so, and and. The psychological and biological evidence bears that out. However, you know, we are told these things. And, and so I think over time, there has been the rise in um, the, the, the concept or the idea that, um, well, it has, there's been a rise in, in violence because women, I believe women, women who are told, you know, that you are the same as a man and you, you, you there, there's a, there's a, tendency to react and to lash out um, because, you know, I can handle myself. I can take care of myself. I'm an independent person and nothing is wrong with wanting to be independent, but in a context now where um, you are now manifesting that independence in being abusive, let's say, um, then it, it becomes a situation where um, it's dangerous and men typically um, do not want to voice their hurts and their feelings and their emotions. And so um, there have been um, there, there have been stories where men have gone to the police and they've been told um, they, they've they've been laughed away or they've been denied any kind of help. Um, you know, those are all anecdotal stories that we hear about today. And so it would appear as though men are not truly um, appreciated, valued when it comes to domestic violence and, and abuse. However, on the flip side of this is the reality that men are still um, expected today not to lash out, right? Not to, um, not to be aggressive in response to aggression. And that, to me, um, is true. We shouldn't, you know, hit a woman. This is my philosophy. Um, but it seems as though, on the one hand, you're telling men don't um, react but on the other hand, when the man, when, when a man comes to um, report an issue, they are being laughed away, and so that creates now a serious dichotomy, a philosophical di dichotomy, because it feels as though men aren't being heard. They, there are expectations on men, but they're not really being heard, respected, and loved and treasured, and so that could only result in a broken society, right? Where you have the rise in domestic violence coming from, um, from, from, from women. But then on the other hand, you have this expectation that men not uh, respond in kind. But, um, and basically, because of a fear of being reprimanded and um, you know, facing pr prosecution. Um, what's your take on it? Right, just to put my two pens in. Um, well, going back to the Bible, you know, um, what we know is that men, right, or husbands, the Bible says, you know, are the head of the home or the head of the woman. 
So when they use the word protect, what well, if there's enough being done to protect the males, the males themselves are looked as upon as protectors of the home. All right. So that I think with that uh, mandate that um, has been placed on them, you would find that they would be a little bit shy, you know, to come and say that they, the protector, is now being abused, right? And so it would appear to them as something, you know, taboo, something inferior to them, to their ego, to come and say, my wife is beating me or my partner is beating me. When we look at men in society as protectors, if you look at the um, armed forces, you look at the police service, I believe, I hope that I'm correct, but you find more males doing that kind of work to protect and serve, right? So that it is something that somebody who, um, a man looking for that sort of help might be, you know, um, feel a how, as we say. He might feel a how, he might be treated a how, you know, and say, man up, man up, you know, you, 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 you're a man, you know, you, why can't you handle it, all right? The second thing I want to say is that um, with the um, victim and witness support unit, which is headed by Mrs. Aisha Corby, she was able to give me some statistics, and I want to share that briefly with you. All right. Sure. Um, so there's it came in graphs. So the victim witness support unit, domestic violence, victim supported by sex for 2022. Female, that number is 459. Male, 125. Right? Then there's a graph showing domestic victims supported by sex. 2023, January to March, which is very recent because we're in April. All right. Female, 93. Male, 27. And there's two other graphs that she shared with me. It says, victim and witness support domestic violence victims supported adults and minors. And men is 109, women 434, right? Um, and the last graph that she shared with me was also for January to March, is for January to March this year. And it says, male 24, um, female 92. So I think that there is, um, you know, a facility or you know, an avenue there for men to seek help to, if they are being abused, because that's why that unit has been set up to, you know, give that same service as given to women, to men as well. But I think that the problem lies with men. <laughs> You know, yeah, some men will be hesitant to go and report. Exactly, you know, so that of course the numbers would show that women are mostly the victims, not men. So that of course, in the mind of society, men are going to always be the predators and treated as you know a predator when you hear of a situation of domestic violence. At this point, we'll take a quick break and we'll be right back. Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. Uh, before the break, we were having a nice conversation on that whole issue of male victims and underreporting and all of that. And my perspective on it really and truly is that I believe members of the TTPS or the police service, wherever in the world we are being listened to, um, they should receive some type of training so that they would be expected and trained to take male report seriously because if there's a, a welcoming environment in the police station 
for men. I believe you will see more men coming forward and, and talking about what they are experiencing, right? Because as Dr. Price rightly said, when women become more aggressive and so forth, men tend to be victims of that, right? And based on the fact that there is underreporting, we cannot tell exactly how pervasive this whole, whole issue is. So I really hope that this conversation would contribute to there being some type of changes in this area going forward. Now, I want to find out about the advice because there may be someone listening to this podcast who is presently experiencing domestic violence. So I want to ask you, Ms. Phipps, what advice would you give to someone in that situation? Um, I heard it in a song, and it was sung by singing France, singing Francine. Cat does run away, dog does run away. So woman, what happened to you? So my thing is that don't stick out in a relationship where you are being abused. All right. I believe that, you know, um, each person should know their value, know their worth. Come to understand who you are and that you're simply not a punching bag. You're simply not somebody who is a doormat. Okay. Of course, I would advise before leaving, try all the other um, counseling, you know, um, what else there is. You know, um, getting your, um, if you belong to a church, getting somebody, talk to somebody, let somebody know what you're going through and how to handle it. Because um, one of the reports that I saw at, um, in, the, in the TTPS um, report of the problem, crime and problem analysis is that they said during the same period, which is 2010 to 2015, there were 121 domestic violence related deaths, of which 56% were female. So that's very telling, you know, what, what the results could turn out to be. If you stay in a relationship that is abusive, violent, you know, where you feel there's fear to speak out, there's fear to do anything. You're under a, a, um, some control, a controlling person. They control who you speak to, how you dress, where you go, when you come back. You know, they particularly isolate you. And you have to undergo that on a daily basis. It's very crippling to be you. It's very crippling to express yourself, to be, you know, free to be you. And nobody should rob you of that because you are unique. You know, you are special you as the bible puts it we are wonderfully and fearfully made and should be treated as such there sh should be that respect for human life for another person so you know go through the process i mean it's a personal choice you have to know what you're facing and what you can deal with it and it's not um an outsider's choice because if you depend on Somebody has to make that decision for you and you go ahead and you leave the marriage and you leave the relationship and things turn bad, you would blame that other person, you know, or you would tend to be like um, dependent on that person and not see yourself as, hey, I can do this. I can rise up. I can, you know, su succeed. You know, I have something to offer. You know, I am a gift, you know, so that um, don't jump from one um, dependent relationship into another. Make sure you know who you are, and what your value is. Great. Dr. Price, what projects are you all currently working on for the same? Right. So we are presently in the planning stages of um, our projects for this year. What we um, intend to do certainly is to host um, future seminars on the issue of domestic violence. So um, as we did last year, we will um, contact uh, individuals who we think have um, expertise in the area 
um, of relationships, of um, handling, dealing with issues of domestic violence, of um, restoring people to wholeness, so like psychologists, psychiatrists, um, et cetera, and um, have them come on. Uh, we have Zoom sessions um, every two to three months where we have these people come on and speak to our audience. And so we want to have um, certainly more of those um, sessions. And, um, you know, I, I would invite everybody to come because the information that is shared um, is really, really beneficial. Um, we always come away with several um, comments from individuals who um, are participants. And they, they, they feel like, you know, they've been um, heard because there's a question and answer. They feel as though their issues have been addressed. And um, I, I think it's really, really beneficial what we do um, in these seminars. Apart from that, we're going to be uh, raising funds um, to um, be able to um, reach out to others who are experiencing or are living, um, you know, lives that have been um, affected by domestic violence. So, for example, um, there, there are some people who, um, because of domestic violence, they've lost their home. They may be renting. They may be in need of assistance, uh, whether um, that looks like food or monetary assistance. And we help them. So we we're going to be raising um, funds in order to do those things. So in terms of um, activities, fundraisers, and um, more seminars this year in order to uh, reach out to those who are in need and to offer mental, emotional, financial assistance to their families. Great. How can persons get involved with your organization? Right. So uh, for people who want to get involved with our organization, um, they can contact us on Facebook. Um, we have our numbers um, there as well. When we have our seminars, uh, we always uh, have a PowerPoint slide at the end where we um, list all of our handles. So we're not only on Facebook, we're also on Instagram. We Again, we have our phone numbers so people are able to contact us. Um, also, um, we have our email address, which is stoptheepidemic at gmail.com. Is that correct, Rosanna? Stop the epi Epidemic 2021. Right. Stop the Epidemic 2021 at gmail.com. Um, they can contact me at uh, 345-4501. They can um, go on Facebook as well and connect with us there and, uh, on, on, and on Instagram. Uh, Rosanna would be able to give you those handles as she knows them off the top of her head. So, Rosanna, you, you can fill in there with that information. Um, well, <laughs> here, here. <laughs> you put me on the hot seat. I'm not a, a social media person, but I believe it is the name of the, um, the company, the NGO Advocates for Making a Difference, on Instagram and on Facebook as well. Right. Um, what I want to say here is that if people are really wanting to get involved at this time, I would like to invite anyone, all right, who's interested in making a difference, who has a heart for people who are being abused, that they can contact us and let us know, you know, what they um, that they are interested in in getting involved, because we would like to expand our director. Um, not the number of our directors, our board. All right, so um, there's an opportunity open, definitely. And um, as we get ready to wrap up, what about persons who would want to make a financial contribution? Do you all have your banking information available? Yes, we are. Um, we do. Sorry, we do. We are with RBC. So the name of the Facebook page is Advocates for Making a Difference. And if you'd like or anyone would like to contribute financially to our NGO, um, the account information is with RBC, that's, your, that's Royal Bank of Canada. And it's a checking account. And the account number is 11 So that's six zeros, four four nine 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 zero eight. Right, so that's Royal Bank of Canada checking account eleven six zeros four four nine 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 zero eight. The email address is stop the epidemic twenty twenty one at gmail.com and our contact information 
is 1-866-620-8466-345-4501. Or you can call 794-8643. Great. Dr. Price and Ms. Phipps, this has been a great conversation. I wish you all, all the very best in your quest to make Trinidad and Tobago a more just and equitable place and to assist victims of domestic violence. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you so much, Colin. I appreciate this so much. <laughs> and all the best to you in your venture. Yes. Thank you for listening to the Legal Corner podcast series. For more information, please visit us at our Facebook or Instagram pages or send your comments to the Legal Corner Podcast at gmail.com. We look forward to hearing from you.